the mystical tool Illuminar Neo is one of my all-time favorite in this photo editing application. It allows you to create beautiful mystical look by adding glow into the highlights and pushing the saturation and contrast. And in today's video, I'm going to show you how to get the most out of this tool. Yes, yes, it's time to move into Luminar Neo, where traditionally we are starting in the catalog module. What are we doing here? Well, we are looking at our sample files. With a quick reminder that if you want to follow me along on your own computer, then jump into the description of this video, follow the link there, download the sample files, add them into Luminar Neo, and we can start. I mean, you can't imagine how many times I say this sentence. Anyway, guys, once you're ready, let's select the first image. We can use the Venice and let's move it into editing module. Here, we're going to be looking for our mystical tool. For this, we need to go into our main editing toolbar and we're going to go down into the creative section. Here, towards the second part, uh, there is the mystical tool with a little candle in front of it. Now to open it, well, you just click on it, just like on any other tool in the application. Now let's make it nice and visible. And very quickly, we have some sliders here as well as additional options. But before we talk about that, let's ask our friend Lumibot to tell us more about this tool. Thank you, Jakob, and hello, everyone. Let's step into a dream with the mystical tool in Luminar Neo, designed to add soft glow, deep contrast, and a touch of fantasy to your photos. It works by enhancing contrast and saturation while softening the light, especially in the brighter areas. The result? A rich, cinematic feel that's perfect for portraits, nature shots, or creative edits. You can control the strength with the amount slider, adjust how shadows behave, and fine-tune the smoothness for a gentle blend. And if you want to add a little mood, use Colorize to add warmth or boost the saturation. Need help along the way? I'm right here at cleverphotographer.com slash Lumabot. Now, let's pass it back to Jakob to walk you through the sliders. Excellent. Thank you so much. Okay, coming back into the application, coming back to our mystical tool, let's go ahead and look at the different controllers. So one more time, how it works, how the mystical effect works, it adds glow and softening into the highlights and increase the color and contrast. So we will look at that. Now, anyway, starting from the top, so we have the amount slider. That's pretty much what activates the tool. So let's take it and don't be shy, just really increase it all the way so you can see what it does to the image. Now, when you push it, you may recognize the look. It looks a little bit like Orton effect. However, it works a little bit differently. You can see that when we kind of push it around, you can see that the glow is happening around the highlights, around the brighter part of your image. So around here. At the same time, you can also see the saturation increasing as well as the contrast contrast between the darker and brighter parts of your photo. Now double check here, yeah? before and after. You can see it, right? Awesome. You know, this is one of my favorite tools in the application. I think it's super cool. I think it looks beautiful. Now, I wouldn't go for the 100. I think that's a little crazy, but it gives us a chance to really see what's happening. So while we have it on 100, unrealistically, let's go to the next slider, which are the shadows. So. Shadows, the darker parts of your image, can be either bright when we shift it up, which doesn't look great on this image, but you may have to use it or you may be able to use it on other projects, or you can make the shadows much darker. So really increase the contrast, because when you make the shadows darker, the brighter areas, the highlights, will still keep the glow and we will add more contrast there. So play around with it, see how it works with your photo, and adjust it accordingly. Now the smoothness. Smoothness is focusing on these areas of the highlights, the brighter areas. So by default, it's on zero, and we can, of course, increase it. That will give us just more kind of gradient smoothness and gradient glow, or we can bring it the other way around, and that will just be yeah, much more contrasty, much more defined. Now this looks almost 
overboard, a little bit like HDR edit. So I'm not a big fan of it, but you can play around with it and see what works for you. Now, most of the time I don't use the smoothness because I think the overall effect is good just with the amount slider, but again, you can use it. You can increase and make it a little bit more smoother effect by bringing it up, or you can make it much more contrasty and defined by bringing it down. <laughs> okay, then we have this kind of hidden tab here called Colorize. Okay, so let's click on it, open it, and inside of the Colorize, we have two options, Saturation and Warmth. Now, this is really handy when you're working with saturated image like this, when maybe there is a lot of kind of warmth already coming from the photo, and you can add to it, or you can decrease it a little bit. Well, let's start with the saturation. I told you that the overall effect increased the saturation anyway, but you can add even more <laughs> and create this crazy edit, or you can take it and bring it down. If you really like the look, so if you like the effect of the mystical tool and you just don't want to add the saturation as a part of the look, then just go into the colorize take the saturation slider and bring it all the way down, or maybe just a little bit less, you know, you don't have to completely remove it, but maybe a little less, around minus 30. And with the warmth, well, a little bit like with the white balance in the develop tool or other similar controllers, with the warmth, when we increase it, it will add the warmth, which again can be crazy, or we can reset it by double clicking on it and we can bring it down and make it cooler. If you feel that in overall, it's a little bit too warm, you can remove it a little bit or make it a little bit cooler by bringing the slider down, just like that. Well, there you have it. Those are the different controllers in the tool. So let's go through it one more time. Uh, amount, adjusting the overall effect, the overall amount of the effect. Shadows, making the shadows darker, brighter. Smoothness, which basically adjusting the smoothness of the effect. We can make it really smooth and really gradient, which makes it look a little bit more natural. Or we can make it very defined, very contrasty by bringing the smoothness down. After that, in the colorize panel, we can adjust the saturation, we can remove the saturation, or we can really push it up. And we can also adjust the warmth by making it warmer when we shift it towards the right, or cooler when we shift it towards the left. Great. Now, on the top, when you activate the tool, we have a few options here. Before and after, when you click on the little eye icon, that's really handy because it only applies to this specific tool. So you can see the before and after for this tool. And we can also reset the tool by clicking on the little arrow. <laughs> Finally, at the end, there is the eye icon. When you click on that, it will give you a little explanation about the tool. Okay. Well, so for this image, <laughs> I would take the amount slider, just bring it up a little bit, maybe somewhere around 60. I would actually make the shadows a little bit darker, maybe a little bit of smoothness up. Yeah, nothing crazy. In the saturation, I would actually bring it down just a little because the image was already saturated anyway. And with the warmth, I would bring it down a little bit too. Once you finish with the mystical tool, well, you can close it and continue with the other tools available in the application. Now, just very quickly, let's go ahead and jump into our second image or second sample file, where we're going to look at the mystical tool in combination with masking. So we have this model here with lots of neon happening around. There is a little bit of bokeh happening already, but it would be nice if we would have that kind of glow and just make it soft and glowy behind her. So let's go ahead into the creative section again. Where are we? <laughs> Mystical tool here. Make it nice and visible. And let's go ahead and increase the amount. Now, don't worry about her. Keep an eye on everything around. I'm looking behind her. Well, I actually going to really push it, I think. I want to create very specific look there. Now the shadows. Let's move it around and see what we like. You know what? Actually, let's make the shadows quite dark. Let's create lots of contrast there. With the smoothness, one way or the other, actually up a little bit. I think around 30. Now, saturation. Mm, let's up, down. Probably by default on the zero works well. You could lower it a little, but I think that's fine. And with the warmth, up, not so much, down, not as well. You know what? Let's leave it on zero too. So it looks good, but she's way too soft, right? I mean, let's have a look before and after. Yeah, it's just not very nice. So how can we <laughs> apply the tool to everything other than hair? Well, we need to go into masking, where, of course, we have an option to use 
number of tools here like brush, linear gradient, radial gradient, color, luminosity, mask AI, and object select AI. Now we could use brush, but why use brush when we have access to AI tools like mask AI? What happens when we click on that, it will scan the image and it will prepare automatic mask for us. Now, generally, it will give you option of different elements in your photo. So let's see what it's going to come up with. Now we are back. We have a human architecture and man-made ground. Well, we are interested in human. So let's do that. And once we click on human, you will notice that only her, or the woman is selected, which is not what we want. We want everything other than her. Well, this is really simple. Little arrow to go back to the initial masking menu. Here at the bottom, we have the mask actions. And here we can click on invert. Now, let's click on show. That will show us the mask. You can see she is selected. And once we click on invert, it will select everything other than her. Is it perfect? No, we have some areas here. We could still adjust. Now we can adjust this very quickly with brush. So let's do that into the brush. <laughs> Strength on 100. Size, yeah. Maybe the softness just a little lower, around 47. Zoom in. I'm using a wheel on my mouse, but you can command or control plus or whatever works for you. And just very quickly, it doesn't need to be perfect. Let's brush over the area we want to add to our mask. So yeah, this. Uh, around her maybe as well, just a bit, that's good. Now, when I'm using brush, I need to use a space bar to move around. Otherwise, you will continue brushing. So when I hold space bar, I can drag the image around. I can also come here. When I want to make a straight line, I can just click once, hold shift and click again. That will make a straight line between the two points. I can also use bracket keys on my mouse to adjust the size of the brush. And just like that, now, I don't know if this belongs to her part of the body. Well, let's still add it. Let's do this. Let's go crazy. Zooming out, I think. Is her shoe also added? Yes. Well, let's remove that. We can hit X, which will bring us to erase. And let's just brush away her shoe. We don't want the glow there. No, no, no. <laughs> Over her leg. This looks good. This looks all good. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, just a little bit more here. So X again on pain. Add this area just like this and we are done well coming back so we can click on the bag and into the adjustments and looking at before and after cool right now if i would really want to be perfect almost perfect i would probably have a little bit of glow on her how can we do this well back to masking into the brush let's use strength only on 20. now big brush because we just want to do one brush stroke and we will paint over her just like this. By doing this, it will create nice little glow over her with just 20% and it will work better together. When finished, close the mystical tool and continue with any other tools in the application. So there you have it. This was the mystical tool here in Luminar Neo. Now don't stop here, continue learning. You can go to our YouTube channel at Clever Photographer and watch all the different videos where we cover all the tools in Luminar Neo. So don't stop today and keep moving forward on your photo editing journey.